Hello, yes, and welcome to the Irish Football Fan TV First Division show for this week with Jared Brown and Paul Tierney as we look back on last weekend's action and we'll also have a brief preview ahead of this weekend's games in the second tier of Irish football. Paul, how's all with yourself? It's a lovely, cracking, sunny morning here with Scotland. It's the same to report from Dublin. Not sunny, but it's warm anyway. That's one thing. It hasn't been sunny for about three days now, but sure, look, it is what it is. Looks like the West now is becoming the new hotspot for sunshine in the in Ireland and taking over from the East. But look, oh, we'll yeah. we'll get on to what we're what we're here for, and we won't delve into an episode of Martin King and all that. And <laughs> we'll start by looking back at uh, last weekend's action, and we'll actually touch on the game you were at. That was at the UCD Bowl, where the home side had a good three-one victory over Shamrock Rovers. Two, Colin Whelan and Jack Keeney kind of really got things going for UCD. They had them two 0 up. Inside 14 minutes. There was hope for Rovers 2 early on in the second half and Thomas Oada made it 2-1 in the 47th minute. But four minutes later, the game was put to bed as a contest thanks to Liam Kerrigan's strike. Uh, that result now moves UCD to four to eight points. Rovers 2 remain ninth with two points. Uh, overall, you have to say, was it a deserved victory for the students? Oh, yeah, definitely. Sure, the two early goals set them on their way straight away. Rovers were always on the back foot from there. It's not that Rovers 2 played badly, it's just UCD just caught them at times where they may have been sleeping and lack of experience crept in. They still played quite well, but overall UCD were the much better side. And the more experienced side, you can see these guys have played at a higher level. And even Andy Moyler said that sometimes it's just a little bit of experience in the end. And he, he said as well, this div- the division they're in is just a tough one to get wins and he, he's nothing against Rovers too. He's not looking forward to play against them away from home. But they showed their experience and that's where they got the win in the end. Yeah, you touched on there that you spoke to UCD manager Andy Myers after the game and we can actually have a look at that interview that you recorded him post-match Friday evening. And that was Paul there talking to UCD manager Andy Myers after a good victory against Rovers too on friday night you mentioned there about the experience that's something as well i think that maybe sometimes people underestimate about this ucd team because i covered their game against longford uh last week and i was just doing a little bit of uh preparation research for that game 14 of their team of their squad has played in the Premier division like some of them now might be cameo appearances or have only made a handful of appearances but that's still pretty strong and like it's it's no surprise to see that like two of them players have the most experience coming from sligo last year Jack Keeney and Liam Kerrigan were on the score sheet on Friday because them two along with Paul Doyle really kind of stood out to me against Longford as being just a little bit of a class above. Was that also evident Friday night? Oh yeah, definitely. Jack Keeney in particular, he runs the show in midfield for them. He's a big, big, big midfielder and particularly against those Rovers too, lads. Some of them who are very young and still probably haven't grown maybe as much as they are going to. You know, he was running the show. Liam Kerrigan on the uh, I think he was on the right wing. Uh, he done brilliantly as well, was constantly involved. Uh, they just ran the show, UCD, and when they had to hold the ball, they did. When they moved it forward and got chances, they did as well. So it's no surprise. Yeah, I think Kerrigan, I think he had over, or sorry, Jack Keeney, sorry, I think he had over 50 appearances in the Premier Division for Sligo. So that's always going to stand out in the First yeah. Division. Just before we wrap up on this game, a bit on Rovers 2. You know, Thomas Mada, who got to go look, they're probably the most busiest player or the most dangerous player in the night. Their goalkeeper, uh, Leon Pulls, he had a busy night in goals, which kind of gives you a good indication of the game. But they have shown they can be sticky opposition. Like they got a good draw the previous week against Drogheda. They've got Wex for the home this week. So they'll be definitely hoping, thinking that's a game where they can bounce back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of the t- like they can play a couple of lads from the senior squad as well. I say when they come in, it's probably a bit of a help for them. I'm not saying the younger lads aren't good enough. It's just having that little bit of extra experience and a bit of thought as well. And uh, yeah, they've got two great results at home and I could see them getting another few. It'll be a tough game for Wexford. They'll make it very difficult for them, Rovers too. And um, I mean, Wexford would be looking to win, but like, you don't know. It, it depends what Rovers two turn up like. And what players are playing for them as well. Like, but they're a good side and they've done very well so far. No one's embarrassed them, which is the main thing. And I don't think anyone will embarrass them, to be honest, by the look of them. They're just 
they're very solid. They just make stupid mistakes at stupid times, but that's the problem. They've got a couple of good players there as well. Yeah, I think they're going to be a bit of an unknown, kind of unpredictable side this season. We'll move on then a little bit down the M11, down to Wexford, because Kevin TV uh, made the trip there to the sunny southeast. Came away with a nil-nil draw against the home side. It's their first drop point of the season. I watched uh, the highlights. This game was up on Wexford's YouTube channel. It wasn't too bad for a nil-nil draw. A couple of good chances. Really all the best one came in the second half. Cabo had probably the two best ones. Uh, substitutions, Dean Casey and Robbie Dung uh, combined for a good chance they on. Casey put in a good cross on the left. Picked out Dunn on Mark in the box. He controlled well. Be blasted high and wide. Midway through the half as well. On the opposite side of the pitch, Sack O'Neill put in a good cross. Picked out Paul Fox at the back post. He was stretching first. Probably done well to make contact on it, but could only hit the side netting. Wakeford's best chance was probably created by their best player in the night, Jack Doherty. He made a good driving run. He laid it off for uh, Camille Simon, but his effort was well saved by uh, Corey Chambers. Wexford, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, we weren't too optimistic about their playoff hopes on this. Uh, myself and Gary kind of said that they were going to be one of the sides that weren't going to feature in that, but they proved us wrong so far. That's another good result for them, and it keeps them just outside the playoffs. They're in sixth at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to make a point on that, I think anyone who goes on a decent run, even towards the end of the season, is always in with a good chance of making the playoffs because it, it is uh, four spots, you know, and it, not everyone's going to be like right guaranteed into it. I think with Wexford as well, they've bought, they've bought very well. I've seen them a couple of times last year at Talca Park and Shells gave them a right beating. So, I mean, they've clearly improved. They're clearly a much better side than they were last year, bringing in players like Dan Tolbin, experienced Premier Division player from UCD. Kaleem Simon is an experienced player as well, has been around a couple of clubs. So bringing those players in, it's 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 very good for them. And obviously, they've, they've got a base of a squad already there as well. Um, I think for Wexford, they'll be looking at maybe creeping into the playoffs, but they'll have to win games like away to Rovers 2 up next, win a lot more home games, like even nil-nil on Friday. I know it's against the league leaders, but you've got to be looking to win that game maybe. And uh, like I don't think you can totally rule them out. I think Gary Spain is a bit harsh on them there, but I think they're... Uh, they're there, thereabouts, but I think they might just miss out this year. Maybe they're just kind of laying bricks for next year. You don't know, though. In fairness, I didn't really do much in that show to disagree with Gary. And maybe they took inspiration for that because they also had a good win against at Lowen last week. As for Kevin TV, a lot of people might look at this and say, well, that's that's two drop points again that we've expected to win. But like they went into the weekend, I think, with a five point gap at the top of the table. So like they probably were in a position where. They could afford to drop points. It's the first drop points of the season. They're always going to drop points. And they have a big injury injury list at the moment as well. So, overall, I don't think Pat Devlin and Cole will be too disappointed. Yeah, I'd say I'd be happy with that considering it was away from home. And they're still three points ahead. So, they still have to drop yeah. three points to be caught up with as well. Um, as you said, they weren't going to win every game. I don't think my, uh, any team will win every game, to be honest. Even though Rovers in the first division have or Rovers in the Premier Division have won all their games so far, let's hope not. But um, you can... That's for, that's for a different day's discussion. Yes, that's a different day, yeah. Uh, Kevin Teeley, I mean, they've probably overachieved in everyone's eyes so far, even though it's only five games. I think everyone thought they'd been going for playoffs, but I don't think anyone thought they would have won four out of five games. Um, I've seen them myself. They're very no-nonsense, but they've got a couple of real quality players there as well, which is the difference that... Uh, even when they went down to 10 men against Rovers too, the game I was at, they they looked a better side even when they were down to 10 men. So they're clearly a good side. Got experienced players like Kieran Martin Waters, Keith Dalton, all those as well. So I I think they'll definitely be up there. They might just slip out. Maybe the teams who we tipped at the start of the season will come good and come stronger and take it over them. But I think they're definitely guaranteed a playoff spot even after that start. Yeah, they've definitely seems to be one side that have carried on and kicked on from the momentum that they gained from last season. Uh, no so, no issues so far with sound ending, sir, Paul? No, all good. Grant. So we'll move on now. Um, probably the pick of the games in the weekend and seemed to be the most entertaining game was the, Dr- the uh, Bray Wanderers game. A 3-1 victory for uh, Drogheda, but doesn't really tell the full story from this game. Just from reading the report on extra time, Dahi, this seemed to be a very open game and Bray could have easily 
got a draw in the end. Obviously, draw had made that dream start going two nil up inside the first half of Mark Doyle and Jamie and James Clark. But Sam McAvoy's goal in the fifty third minute really kind of changed the game because then moments later, Bray could have equalised. Derek Daly had a shot cleared off the line by James Clark. Their goalkeeper David Ottomozzi had to make a number of good saves during the game. And then it wasn't until Stephen Meany's goal in the 89th minute that made sure the victory for a draw of that and added a little bit of gloss to a scoreline that seemed to be very harsh on the away team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I seen Bray a couple of weeks ago against Cove as well, and it seemed like it's the same problem. They're not taking the chances they're getting. Ultimately, that was a nil-all draw the first night. Uh, on Friday, it was just they were losing. They were chasing the game. We're dictating the play for a lot of it from what you said and just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net when they needed to um draw it in the end showed their class and showed why they're probably everyone's favorites to win automatic promotion overall they're very good side and at home they should win all their home games uh it doesn't matter who it's against so i think very unlucky but it's still the same problem they had uh two weeks ago against cove and draw it shown their class when they have to I think that game kind of just sums up that like going forward they're probably the most exciting team in the league they've got so many good attacking options that we've seen there Mark Doyle James Clark Steve Amini scoring throwing the fact Chrissy Lyons Jake Highland they're all exciting players but they always seem to concede a goal like I think the problem is if they don't score in a game I don't see them having the grit to hang on and get a nil-nil draw like the only game they didn't score this season they lost one nil to Longford so that's my worry for them is when they don't score I don't think they can be solid enough at the back to kind of realise right we'll take the hit and we'll take the nil nil yeah. nil nil draw and that's a prime example they nearly the, the nearly threw away a game they were very very comfortable in as for a Bray point of view just like from reading that match report and I know that that's all we're going off but it does seem there was encouraging signs particularly the way they, they fought back in that second half and didn't give up you've seen them a couple of weeks ago against Cove as you mentioned you said that they, they created a number of chances would you be optimistic for them that they can make the playoffs they're currently in that last spot at the moment in fifth place, but it has been an up and down season. I'd be optimistic, but they've got to start putting these chances away. Um, I think even I got a quick word with Gary Cronin after the last game as well. And even he said, it's just frustrating that they weren't putting the chances away. They proved against Longford on the bank holiday Monday that they could put the chances away and beat a team who are right up against them away from home as well. So they've got to start doing it more on a consistent basis. It's still a very young side as well, which is another uh, factor that has to come in. So once they start putting the ball in the back of the net, I'll be, I'd be more optimistic for them then. But if they continue doing what they've done against Strada and Cove, then, I don't know, they might just miss out. Yeah, it just seems to be a little bit of inconsistency with them, like it is for a lot of teams. It's a huge now game. I wouldn't quite call it make or break, but it's just definitely a significant game against UCD, whereas draw had their way to at loan Friday night. That's the game I actually hope to get down and cover. And like I expect that to kind of just follow the same pattern of a lot of draw the games this season. I think they'll win, but they'll give up mm-hmm. chances. And it could it could they could it could end up being like a four two uh free for all because in fairness to at loan, while they are struggling, they are a young side. They do try and play football the right way in fairness to some so it'll be interested to see how that goes. We'll move mm-hmm. on now to Saturday night's games. There's two of them. Uh the pick of them if you want to call it the El Clasico, Mid- Midlands El Clasico, or you could just say it's the original El Clasico and the Spaniards stole it from Athlone and Longford. <laughs> we won't argue it. We won't argue it. No, we won't. We won't get into that. But anyway, uh, it's Longford who've had the bragging rights over these two sides over the last couple of years. And that continued on Saturday with a 2 0 victory at the City Calling Stadium. Both goals come in the first half from Sam Ferdin. Uh, Longford will also be delighted to see after a disappointing debut last week Lido Lotefe he was involved in the first goal he set that up because he got substituted against UCD so it was good to see him bounce back and be involved in the action Saturday and Rob Manley who we so often see put the ball in the net he provided the assist for the second goal Longford moved up to third just behind Drata on goal difference it was their first victory as well in their third attempt since football's uh, restart it was badly needed they were comfortable. They, they probably should have won this game by a lot more. Varden missed a chance to get a hat-trick. Manley missed a couple of chances in the second half. But um, it was just a bad and needed confidence booster for them, really, after two poor league results. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely what they needed. And they got it. I'd say they knew themselves. I'd say Darryl Doyle was in the dressing room telling them as well, look, we've just got to get this result, lads. We've had a poor start coming back. It's like a new season start in a way, to be honest. And uh, 
he was that's probably what he was saying. They got the results and they'll be looking to kick on the next game now as well because I think they were everyone's uh, second favourites for going for automatic promotion as well, just behind Drada. So they've got to be looking to kick on regardless of who they're playing in the next game. Yeah, they were involved in the cup last night. They went down an extra time against Cork. Do you think that could have both a mental and physical effect for the game against Galway? Obviously, physically, because it's 120 minutes. Again, another game after three or four days with just rest. And then, obviously, mentally, because it might be another little bit of setback for confidence. Because that's a game they would have found the chances of a, yeah. a mini upset given Cork's form. Yeah, especially the timing of the goal as well, right at the end, after battling so hard to get to the end of extra time as well. It's actually quite soul destroying. I've been involved in games like that myself. I'm sure you have too. So um I mean they like they're they're a good bunch of lads, Longford, and I'm sure they'll be ready to go again. They have got an extra day as well, because the game uh, was the game on Saturday. Oh no, the, the next That's game. Friday, Friday. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I'm thinking of last week. Yeah. So it, it'll be tough for them, but I'm sure Dara Doyle will have them in and say, Look, lads, we've got to get going again straight away. That's just the way this season is. It'll take a couple of weeks for some players, but that's just the way it is, and they just got to keep going. Yeah, I suppose the only positive you could say from it, like they they could stand some a little bit in the in the long run, is in like they can start getting up to match fitness levels and the the pace required quicker than other teams because they've had more games. If say obviously they can manage the recovery and obviously don't get setbacks, injuries, and that, which is always going to be an issue after such a long layoff. As for at loan, I know it's well. We say it's nearly early days, early days, but we are nearly at the halfway point of the season. We they were also one of them sides that we wrote off in terms of we can't see them making a push for the playoffs a few weeks ago. And evidence so far from the opening two games suggests we probably will be right about that. Yeah, definitely. As you said, they're a young side and they try and play football. Um, I mean that usually either works really well or it usually either works how it, how it's gone for at loan now. Um, I think they'll pick up points at home, but I don't see them winning many many away. There's some decent sides in that league, uh, uh, particularly up towards the top. So it's going to be a tough year for them, but I think it'll be a learning year for them. And if they keep playing football the way they are, I can't see things improve. I can't not see things improve. Yeah, I was at their opening game, home game that is against Cavan TV back at the end of February. And just from talking to a couple of club officials, they actually seem kind of excited and happy enough with the project. A lot of local lads, a lot of young lads, like I said, they're building. They're trying to go out and play football the right way. Like that game against Cavan TV, they gave, they gave them enough of it for quite a while. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Cabo were able to go up the mixture gears in the last quarter of the match. And that's why they pulled away in 1-3-1. But there was encouraging signs. And like they realised it's a long-term thing. It could take maybe two or three years if they can keep these players, they can keep growing and developing at the same rate, that they could then push for uh, a playoff spot in the first division because it's it's not that awfully long ago at loan or in the Premier Division and they're a club mm-hmm. as well with a fantastic uh, tradition and history as well so it's hopefully it can kind of sit and kick on and be more competitive going forward yeah definitely. we'll finish up now with the other game on Saturday night down south between Cove Ramblers and Galway this finished two all all the drama come in the second half we had to wait to the 63rd minute for the opening goal when centre back Charlie Lyons put Cove one nil in front. Then Galway turned the game on its head in a five-minute spell from the 76th to the 81st minute. First equalised through substitute Francie uh, Lam Utu. And then uh, club veteran Finney Flatterly put them in front, entering the final stretch. But Cove got a share of the spoils in this game in injury time. A Dave Hurley free kick found the Lyons, who grabbed his second goal of the game. Overall, this seemed to be a fair result. Uh, Cove now seventh with five points. Galway one place below that and also one point worse off. So ideally it was a game that both teams could have done with a win. Yeah, definitely. I was actually reading it called Ramblers thing on Facebook there. Uh, just a fans forum, I think it was. And they were just saying how it played out. It was just madness. They were one nil up cruise and concede two goals out of nothing and then have to nick a late equaliser. It's obviously frustrating for them as well. Seen them a couple of weeks ago. They're not a bad side, but a lot of the travelling they do would be very tough for them. They've probably got the most in that division. So it, it's very tough for them a lot of the time. Um, so their home games are very important and they must look to be winning all those home games. In terms of Galway, I think it's just inconsistency, inconsistency all throughout this season. Four draws and one defeat. I mean, Galway were a team a lot of people would have tipped to be up there for playoffs as well. So 
it's disappointing for them and they'll be looking to get their act together in the next game. Yeah, I think when you look at Galway and all the signs they made before the start of the season back in February and all the hype and expectation and buzz was around the club. And you will look to their first five fixtures and see they're not playing UCD, the team that's been relegated. They're not playing Longford and Draw, the two more experienced and fancy teams in that division. Yes, they had Cove as well at home, but you still would have looked, or sorry, not Cove, they would have had Cavan TV at home last season, surprise mm. package. But you still would have looked at them first five fixtures and things have right. Galway should be putting in a real statement of 10, leaving their fingerprints left on this division and getting a good start and be top of the table. And they've been, without a shadow of doubt, the most disappointing team, I think, across both leagues so far this season. Yeah, I think you look at their results, they they were dropping leads or they're chasing, like they're two goals down or they're one goal down. They're always chasing, they're trying to get back into it. So once they get that sorted, maybe they've got a couple of injuries as well. They can kick on from there. But I think it's a frustrating game for both sides. I think there'd be two teams who want, might be looking to just creep in from the situation now. I think everyone thought Galway would be up there by now anyway. But um. It's going to be tough for them now. They're up against it and they're going to have to win a couple of games away from home, which maybe they wouldn't normally win. Maybe take points away from Cabin TD, away at UCD, stuff like that. So it's going to be very tough for them. Yeah, just go back to Cove there as well. That was actually kind of a good point that you made about the travel they have because there's there's no real team in and around them. You look at this division and they're the only team that fall into the category. You've got the four, I think it's the four Dublin, three base, Dublin based clubs. And obviously Bray, who of course on the border between Dublin and Wicklow. You've got yeah. Wexford in on the M11. That's only an hour from Dublin. Drogheda then up in the M1. That's only 30, 40 minutes. Longford on the M4. Again, that's only about an hour from Dublin. And then you've got Galway and Atlow and they're all within an hour of, of each other. And then Cove, they really are kind of cut a drift down there at the south. Wexford, it's, t- it's a toss for coin between the trips to Dublin and a trip to Wexford for their nearest journey. And that's still probably off the top of my head without actually looking at Google Maps. That's probably about two and a half hours, maybe three hours. So that definitely can have an effect. And as you said, it probably puts more emphasis on their home fixtures. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think that's why they moved the home fixtures to Saturday night. Obviously, they don't have uh, fans there at the minute, but I think they wanted more people to actually go to the games then as well. Uh, more of an appeal. So I, I think a lot of for Cove goes down to their fans and their home games as well. You even look at the last time they came up, I think it was back in 2007. A lot of it was down to their home games. And I even remember uh, an old Rovers fan telling me when they were coming up out of the first division, they had to win at Cove to get up and they only won the game 1-0. So it's obviously a very tough place to go. It's a slog for teams who go down there. So they'll be looking to pick up more points from home. As you said, their one win so far was against that Lona home. So they'll be looking for a few more like that. If they can get a run going, who knows? As I said, the playoffs, anyone can sneak in, particularly with a good run towards the end of the season. So it's it's up to them, really, and a lot of it will be down to their home form. Yeah, and with it being such a short league and condensed season, as you mentioned, good win and momentum can seriously carry you through for the rest of the season. We'll look ahead now to this weekend's games, uh, Paul. We'll briefly kind of just chat about them yeah. and give maybe a quick uh, verdict and uh, prediction on them. Four games on Friday night. It's at Lone against Drogheda. That's the game I'm hoping to get to. Galway at home against Longford. Cabin TV at home against Cove. And Bray at home against UCD. And then on Saturday uh, it is Shamrock Rovers 2 versus Wexford. That's at 3pm on Saturday. We'll start with Friday night's games. We'll start with the game I'm hoping to cover at Lone versus Drogheda. As I said earlier, I think this could be an open game be plenty of goals because of the way that draw that kind of play it's kind of like i think because of their firepower they're like uh you can score two but we know we'll score three or four i think that's the way it could play out here i think that loan will get chances but i think draw that probably should come away with a 3-1 victory or something yeah. like that anyway yeah i agree i think draw by a couple of goals for me they've just got too much for atlon atlon and play good stuff they'll be confident at home but i think draw will pick them off particularly towards the end of the game as well yeah, and then the game that Gary Spain, I think, is going covering is UCD first. Is Bray, sorry, versus UCD. This is kind of an interesting game. UCD, going from what I've seen against them, against Longford a few weeks ago, and from the talk yourself there to start the show, they seem to be very impressive. They can kind of have continued their football philosophy from Colley O'Neill. That's been a nice brand of football. Bray, we still don't really kind of know. It's been the good, the bad, and the ugly with them so far in their three games, four points. I think we could see an away victory here Friday night. 
Um, I, I think it's a very tough one to call. I think both teams would be looking to take three points because the, it's the exact game where both teams could make a proper statement uh, to kick on for the rest of the season. I don't see it happening. I think the two sides are just they're struggling a little bit for momentum and consistency. So I, I'm going to go for a draw, maybe one all or even nil all at Carlo. Yeah, and then just a little bit up from that game in Stradbrook, Kevin TV home against Cove. We touched on the fact that they've got a, a big injury this at the moment. And I, I think that even makes their four points so far return quite impressive that they've been so competitive despite all their setbacks with players unavailable. This is a good opportunity for them now to kind of get back to winning ways and to keep that cushion and gap at the top of the table. And I fully expect them to carry that out Friday night. Yeah, same here. I think, as we mentioned, with Cove traveling up, it's the second time coming up to Dublin Wicklow in the last three weeks. It'll start to take its toll the more they have to do it particularly in such close, uh, so close to each other. Both trips are so close. Um, in terms of Cabin Teeley, I think they'll be looking to win that game. It's their first game back at home since the lockdown. And I, it'd be Cabin Teeley for me, maybe by a goal or two. 2-0, uh, 2-1 maybe. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what state the Stradbroke pitch will actually be in. It always brings up so much controversy and discussion, but the fact there has been no football or rugby in particular, which always seems to raise the standard of it on the last couple of months. It will be interesting to see what state the surface will be in yeah. on Friday. And then we'll wrap up Friday's previews by heading back out west. Galway home against Longford. The draw specialist in Galway up against a Longford team now that really want to kick on from Saturday's victory against Athlone. But as we touched on there, it'd be just interesting to see how much the effects of the long travel down to Cork playing 120 minutes and then conceding a late goal is going to affect them. Yeah, definitely. I think Longford uh, will be looking to win that game as well. They'll be looking to kick on, but it's, it's it's a mental challenge as well as a physical challenge for them as well. You know, conceding the goal that late can be damning to some players as well. Uh, for Galway, I think the issue is getting out of the habit of drawing games. They should be looking to win. They're at home. They'd be looking to get a first win of the season to help them kick on here. Looking more than now, particularly after last night, I probably would have gone for Longford to edge it uh, yesterday, but I'm going to go for a draw now again because I think Longford, what happened last night will just be, it's just going to be very tough for them. And I think they'd probably take a draw after that as well, particularly with all the traveling they're doing. Yeah, it's an e easy result to always just go with Galway, go yeah. on the current form, just, just go for the draw. And yeah. we're wrapping up then on Saturday, Tallis Stadium, Shamrock Rovers 2 at home against Wexford. Wexford will be confident they've had two positive results since the return. But as I mentioned with Shamrock Rovers, you don't know what you're quite going to get. Like they got a good result against Drogheda a couple of weeks ago at home. Also drew their open home game against Galway. So Wexford will be very forewarned going into this game. And I think this one could end up in a stalemate as well. Right. Um, I agree with you. I think it's going to be very tight, but I think if Wexford are looking to get anywhere, they should be looking to win a game like this. And uh, I think with the form they have so far, I think they might just nick it 1-0 maybe. A lot of it depends on what players are playing for Rovers too. Do they have that bit more experience to help them out, which they didn't at UCD on Friday night. A lot of it is down to that. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go Wexford, nick it 1-0. Yeah, one of the fact that their the first team aren't playing until Friday with a you know, give a few of their first team players a bit of a run out to get them warmed up on Saturday. Yeah. Imagine yeah. the imagine the imagine the thought to work for players to see the likes of Graham Burke and Jack Byrne takes the field, but I don't think we'll see that happen. Yeah, no, no, no. Just a couple maybe like Liam Scale who did four against Strada and Neil Ferrugia, the likes, you know, the players who can play in the squad as well. Yeah. As as a Pats fan, I wouldn't mind if they decided, right, we've a, we've a good lead. At the top of the Premier Division, right, we need to get our second team up the table. So we'll, uh, we'll sacrifice the game of Richmond on Sunday. But I don't think that'll be in Stephen Bradley's thinking, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that's where we're, we're going to leave it there for our first uh, division show here this week in Irish Football Fan TV. Paul, thanks very much for joining me. It's a great pleasure as always. Perfect, Jerry. Same to yourself. Yeah, keep tuned to the channel over the course of the next couple of days. Obviously, we had our Premier Division show that went out earlier during the week. Uh, we'll hopefully get plenty of content and match reaction and post-match interviews from this weekend's games up on our channel over the next couple of days. But until then, thanks very much for watching and hope you're all keeping safe out there.